hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tim. If you are new here, we do, well, we being me, but me being you and I. Here, we do board game photography, videography, photography in general, editing tips, tricks. Basically, when I grow, you grow too. And I would love to have you join the team. Let's hit 1,000. But other than that, if you want to follow the progress along each board game, go ahead and check out my social media linked right here. And other than that, let's get started. So today we are learning about a little board game called Root. First off, the main board, of course, goes in the center. Now normally the game does come with a cardboard center, of course, but here I am using this bougie neoprene mat because why not? And then you wanna go ahead and choose a faction that you wanna play with. Today we're gonna to go ahead and set up for a two player game using the Marquise de Cat and the Eerie Dynasties. Now again, like all my other tutorials, I always like to mention that I like to put everything in the same bag that was just convenient. So everything that you need for one player in a bag, it's just way easier instead of like having all these 10,000 components in separate little bags. Kills me. Now from there, you want to go ahead and sit players clockwise in Meave order. M-E-A-V, meaning the Marquise de Cat, the Eerie Dynasties, the Woodland Lions, and then the Vagabond. Vagabond. But of course, since we are setting for two players today, we're just going to use the first two factions. Then you want to take your victory point markers. Go ahead and stack those at the zero point marker on the bottom of the victory point track. You also have four of these tokens, which are ruin tokens. You're going to go ahead and put these along the slots that say R on the board. So they're going to fill up all the ruin spaces. Now next up, if you look along the top of the board, you will see all these slots for items. Go ahead and take the matching tiles and then put them along the top accordingly. Now everyone also has these really nice player boards. So you're going to go ahead and turn these around to the back and then it's going to give you instructions for how you're going to set up each individual faction. We're going to go ahead and start off with the Marquise de Cat first. Now for the cats, you're going to find this castle looking token called the keep. You're going to put this keep token in any clearing that you want. So we'll go ahead and start off in this left corner here. Now the cats are notorious for swarming the field and kind of just battling everyone and just being in everyone's face and just annoying people and Sounds like my kind of faction. Now you're gonna place your warriors in every single clearing except for the clearing diagonally across from your keep. So if my keep is over in the top left corner, I'm gonna put warriors in every single clearing except for the bottom right corner, which is diagonally opposite from the keep. Now the cats also have three separate types of buildings. They have a recruiter, they have a sawmill, and they have a workshop. Place one of them in the same clearing as the keep, and the other two also go into adjacent clearings that are right next to the keep as well. And then you're going to flip your board back over to the front and then start filling up all these building slots from right to left. So when you finish under the zero log column, all of that should be empty. Now switching over to the Eerie Dynasty, remember that completely wide open clearing that we left opposite from the keep? You're going to go ahead and put six warriors there and a roost token, which are pretty much the buildings for the Eerie Dynasty. Now on the player board for the birds, you'll see a slot here that says leader card. They come with four leader cards and you can go ahead and choose one. For this setup, we'll go ahead and start off with the Despo that you can put in that slot. The other three you can put to the side for now. And then if you look to the left of the leader card, you'll see two different actions that are spelled out specifically for each different leader. For the Despo, it says move and build, which means you're going to put these two loyal Vizier cards in matching slots above the board here, which is labeled as the decree. So I'll put one underneath right here for move and another right here for build. And that is the setup, super easy, right? So how do you play the game? So the first two 30 points win, or the first to meet the conditions of their Dominus card, which we'll talk about at the end, also wins. The Dominus card changes the conditions of the game. We'll worry about that later. For now, we'll just go over some general stuff about the game, since Root is very different from other games in that each faction is very, very different from each other. But there's still some general gameplay mechanics that each faction is going to go through. So Root has three phases. Birdsong, which is a fancy way of just saying morning, and then you also have daylight and then evening. Now, let me explain the map in a little more detail. So on your map, you have a total of 12 clearings. Clearings are just these empty patches of the forest. And then each clearing is also connected by a path. Kind of like how you imagine a normal forest would be, right? Now within each clearing, it also has these tile slots, which are places that you can construct your building. Now each clearing also has a specific suit like spades, diamonds. In this case, we have the fox, rabbit, and mouse. Imagine them as the critters that are living within that community. So naturally, you wonder, I know you're wondering right now, how do I move from clearing to clearing? Let me tell you. You can move any number of wars you want from clearing to clearing as long as you either rule the clearing that you're going from or the clearing that you're going to. Whoever has the highest combination of warriors and or buildings will rule that clearing. 
Now, if you are tied, typically no one will rule that clearing. Now, one more thing about the clearings. Remember the ruin tokens that we set up in the beginning? Now, for this game in particular, since we're playing with the cats and the birds, they're just going to stay there and block those empty spots. They would come into play when the Vagabond is one of the factions that you end up playing with. Okay, so we have 12 clearings on the map. And within each clearing, they have their own suits and also their own spots where they can build their buildings. You can move any number of awards you want from clearing to clearing as long as you rule either the clearing you're going to or the clearing you are moving from. Just make sure they're connected by the white paths that are outlined throughout the map. Now let's talk about the deck of cards. I actually just realized that all the suits of the cards are actually on the back of each card. So all these suits match the same suits as the clearings that are listed on the map. Fox, Mouse, and Rabbit. But you also have one additional suit, which are the Birds. Birds are just wild cards. Then shuffle the deck of cards and give three cards to each player. So think of cards as the currency of Root. Different actions are going to ask you to spend these in order to perform said action. Now the second use of cards is to craft them. So take for instance this fox card here. On the bottom left, you'll see a little fox icon. So let's say I want to craft this specific fox card. As the Marquis de Cat, I have to own a workshop because different factions will require you to have different buildings in order to craft cards. For the Marquis de Cat, they have to have workshops. Now more specifically, they have to have a workshop within a fox clearing. If I was playing as the Iris, I would have to own a roost in a fox clearing. So then again, as the cast, I'm going to go ahead and activate that specific workshop in the fox clearing, which means I can't use that workshop anymore for the rest of this turn. And then again, one hammer token, I move my victory point marker two spots up the victory point track, and then I discard this card. Now you can craft as many times as you want, as long as you have the necessary conditions for it. So again, for the cats, as long as I have enough workshops in matching suits, then I can craft as many times as I want. But again, once that workshop is used this turn, you can't use it again till your next turn. And there are also two different types of cards that you can craft. On the fox card, you have this torn page beige color, which means that it's an instant effect. So you activate right away and then it's done. The other type of craft cards are stone gray cards. Now for those, they just stay face up until whenever you want to use their effect. Okay, so we know how to move. We know how to craft. But what if we want to eliminate the entire competition? And again, my favorite part about any game, which is battling. How do you battle in route? Now to initiate a battle, pick a clearing where your warriors are in the same clearing as another faction. So if I'm playing as the cats and I want to attack the Eries in this clearing, I would be labeled as the attacker, of course, and then they are the defender. Which means as the attacker, I'm going to roll these two custom dice that the game comes with. The highest number goes to the attacker. So here I rolled a three, which means that my total number of hits are three. And then the lowest number die will go to the defender. Now, just remember that the number of hits that you deal can only match the number of warriors that you have in total. So let's say I have two warriors and I roll a three. I can only deal two damage total because I have two warriors in that clearing. So after that, go ahead and remove the number of warriors depending on how much damage was dealt to each person. So if I dealt a total of three damage and they have two warriors, then both warriors will be removed from the board. And then they also deal two damage to me in return. So I'm going to go ahead and move two of my warriors away from the board as well. A couple other quick little details to note. The player that is taking the damage gets to choose which piece gets removed first. But remember, warriors always have to be removed first before you move on to buildings or tokens. So if you have buildings or tokens in that spot, they also do get damaged. And if the attacker removes those buildings and or tokens, they score one victory point for each piece that was removed. So if I have a sawmill and a wood token there, along with one warrior, and I get a total of three damage. And the player that was attacking me rolls a three. That player removes my warrior first and then also deals two damage, which in turn scores them two victory points for that whole battle. Now let's say that I had no warriors in the clearing to begin with. That means I was defenseless and the person attacking me will also deal something called an extra hit. So no matter what they roll, even if they roll a zero, they will automatically deal one hit to me. So if I have just one building there, you don't really need to roll because obviously no matter what you roll, you will always get rid of that building. The last cool thing about this game is that there's something called an ambush. Now during battle, if you are attacking someone and the defender plays something called an ambush card, think of it like a, it's a trap, it's a trap card. On their end, their ambush has to match the clearing of where the battle is taking place. And before the battle even begins, what the ambush card does is that it automatically deals two immediate hits right away to the attacking player. Now in turn, you can kind of chain this effect if the attacker in turn has an ambush card that matches the same suit of the ambush that's being played. So we take it from the top. I start an attack in this clearing. The defender plays an ambush card. Now in turn, I play my own ambush card, which cancels their ambush and therefore ambushes are zeroed out from there. Or another scenario, I attack this clearing, they play an ambush card, I lose two more warriors right away, and then the battle continues with rolling the dice and then clearing it out from there. So let's do a quick recap on battle. Pick a clearing where you have any number of warriors. 
If you decide to attack another player, then they get a chance to play any ambush cards that of course matches the suit of that clearing that they are using the ambush for. If you still have warriors left, roll the dice and then deal the max number of hits depending on how many warriors that you have left. The higher number is going to go to you, lower number goes to the defender. And then you remove pieces depending on what was rolled on both dice. The higher number of course goes to the attacker, lower number goes to the defender. Now if the attacker manages to remove all the defender's warriors, you now get to remove their buildings and or tokens, which will now give the attacker one victory point for each piece removed. Oh, but I know what you're thinking. Where do those buildings go after they've been attacked and removed from the board? Good question, because I had the same one too when I was playing. <laughs> they go back to the rightmost slot on your player board. And then of course, if the defenders have no warriors to begin with, they are considered defenseless and will automatically take an extra hit from the attacker during that battle. So we talked about the map. We talked about moving around route. We talked about battle and we talked of course about crafting cards. Now the big question is, well, what the flip am I doing on my turn? Now, since the Marquise de Cat start first, let's go ahead and start off with them. We start off first with phase one, which is bird song. Now during phase one, you're gonna take a wood token and place it at every single sawmill that you have. Since we start off with one sawmill in the corner where the keep is, we're gonna put one wood token right there. And what's nice is that if you forget any of these steps, they're all listed along your playing board. So you just go in order. From there, you move into daylight and you can craft using any workshops you have. So since I put a workshop in the rabbit clearing, that means I can only craft rabbit cards at this point in time. We can battle and we know how to start that now. You can march, which lets you move twice. So I can move from one clearing to the next and then that same clearing to the next. You can recruit, which means at each recruiter location, you can put one warrior there. I would like to build. So in any clearing that you rule, if you have an empty slot there, you can build one of those three buildings that you have, just paying its cost in wood. So I like to build my sawmills first, which means in order for me to buy another sawmill, I just pay one wood token and then boom, I can take a sawmill, put it in that location, and in turn score one victory point right away. And the last one is called overwork. So for overwork, you just have to spend one card of a matching suit in a matching clearing where you have a sawmill, and then you can gain one wood token there. Minus recruit, all the other actions you can perform multiple times. You can take up to three actions per turn. Plus, if you want to discard a bird card, however many you want, you can spend an additional action that turn. Now that is daylight. From there, we transition into the evening phase where you just draw one card, and then any additional cards if you start uncovering the additional card slot. Just make sure that your maximum hand limit is of course five cards and then discard down if you have any more than that. Just remember that the cats also have two special abilities. One is called the keep where at your keep location only you can place buildings there. And then the second one is called field hospitals. Now for that one, whenever Marquise warriors are removed, so for example, if I'm in a battle at a rabbit location, if I just discard a rabbit card, I can keep that warrior, but just have to put them back to where my keep is. And you can do this for any amount of warriors where you have cards to discard for. Now we'll switch on over to the Eerie Dynasties. Bird song. if your hand is empty, draw one card. Of course, we start with three cards, so we don't have any. We can skip on to the next one. Here, you can add one or two cards to the decree, and only one card added may be a bird card. So here, you have to add a card every single turn to the decree. What helps is if you start up with the rabbit card, you can put a rabbit at the recruit, so you can constantly recruit at the location you start off with. Of course, this is in this specific instance where the keep is in the top left corner for the cats, and of course, I'm opposite to that for this particular setup. Now the last part of Birdsong, if for whatever reason you don't have any roost, make sure you go to the clearing with the fewest amount of warriors, add a roost there with three warriors. Now we move on to Daylight, where we can craft a card just like the cats. Only problem is the Eerie Dynasties don't like to craft. So every time they craft, they actually only get one victory point no matter what it is. That is because of their disdain for trade ability. And the other part of the Daylight phase is to resolve the decree. So you're gonna go from the top left to the top right, starting first with Recruit. So for the Eeries, they're different in that you have to perform every single action that's listed up top. So the more you add to the decree, then the more you have to kind of compensate for it. Since I have a rabbit in recruit, I can go in and recruit one warrior here. That's easy. I put one of my viziers. The viziers have to be in move and build. So I can move in any clearing since the bird is a wild suit. A battle you have to be careful with. I would recommend, actually the game recommends that you put a bird card there. And that's for a good reason because it's hard to initiate battles. Again, you have to perform every single action that's listed from left to right. You can do them any order you want per column, but you have to perform an action for each card that's listed in the decree. And then we move on over to build. Again, build has a wild bird card, which is perfect because now I can build in this clearing. Now, the reason why I was so adamant and passionate about telling you that you have to perform every single action is because of this negative effect that the Eerie Dynasties have, and that's called turmoil. If you cannot perform one action in the decree, it's gonna cause a cascade of very, very bad effects. First is Humiliate, where you lose one victory point 
per bird card in the decree that you have. These do include Vizier, so no matter what, you will always lose two victory points. A second is Purge, where you discard all cards from the decree. Third is Depose, where you get rid of your leader, put it face down, and then you pick a brand new leader. And then, of course, match the Viziers to whatever your leader says. And lastly is Rest, where you immediately end the Daylight Phase and go into the Evening Phase. And then in the Evening Phase, here we score victory points for the rightmost empty slot on the Roost track. And then you're also going to draw one card, plus if you see this symbol, of course, you're going to draw an additional card for each of those that are uncovered, making sure that you discard down to, again, five cards. Now, the last thing we need to talk about for Root is the Dominance card. Remember at the beginning where I said one victory condition, of course, is to reach 30 points, and then whoever reaches that first wins. Second victory condition is to play a Dominance card. So there are four types of Dominance cards in the deck. You can choose to spend them, just like a regular card, but if you do, then you have to also place it face up on the board, and then any player during their daylight phase can spend that specific suit in order to pick up that dominance card in exchange. You cannot craft them just like the ambush cards, but you can activate them once you have 10 victory points. So if you have at least 10 victory points and you activate the dominance card, remove your victory point tracker from the victory point track. And now the only way you can win from here and out is to meet the victory condition that is listed on that dominance card. So for instance, this one states, you win the game if you roll three fox clearings at the start of your bird song. Meet those conditions and you win the game. So that is Root in a nutshell. Of course, every single faction is asymmetric, so they're all different. But I just wanted to lay out the general rules and gameplay mechanics because I believe in you and I know you can figure out the rest from there. However, Root is not over yet. I do want to get into the first very, very first gameplay videos of this channel. We definitely have some more Root coverage coming up. So make sure you don't miss out and subscribe if you aren't already. Until then, have a fun rest of your day.